thank you very much for coming. Uh, hopefully you now uh, you are able to learn a little bit about Java for IoT, you know. Uh, and uh, before I start, we'd like to ask you, uh, who here already worked with Java? Knows about Java. Perfect, okay. Anyone of you have already worked with Java, ME, or for small devices? Okay, you, perfect. Uh, that's right. So just to know who is uh, who wants, let me introduce myself. Whoops. Okay. Come on. Er, er. Okay. These things always happen. Okay. I'm Jeff Prestes. I'm ev evangelist of PayPal and Braintree, and uh, I'm from Brazil. As could you notice by my accent. <laughs> And I'm here you to talk ab about, the agenda is to talk about IoT and Java and device IO API. So, uh, I, I, before I start, I need to ask you one thing. We have, a, I pre have prepared a lab session too. So, probably you go until the end, until 5.15. Is this okay for you? Because we have, uh, I know it's, I uh, believe, the last session of the conference. So I would like to check with you if it's not, it's not a problem. Okay? So we go in details for each uh, who here already have a Raspberry Pi. Okay, great. So I believe some details we can move forward. Because as I didn't know how is the knowledge of you about a Raspberry Pi. I prepare, I go in very, very detail. So, uh, the day I start to talk about it, what is now IoT? What is IoT? Uh, the, I always like to talk about the, what skills IoT, to work with IoT requires, okay? And, and we'll talk about a little bit about what, what is Raspberry Pi, for people who don't know. Uh, about, talk a little bit about setup of Raspbian, Raspbian. Uh, later, we talk about the Java support to single on system on chip machines, okay, like a Raspberry Pi or Big Bone Black. Later, we talk about Java device IO API, okay, specific uh, the, this uh, API to work with GPIO and other single board com single system chip computers, uh, and we will start our lab, okay, okay, so. I don't know, my, it's not working, okay. So I would like to start to say, what is not IoT, okay? We have, a, nowadays we have several appliances with some uh, components over there, you know, touch screen, do some stuff, or these amazing robots, it's, it's very cool, right? But this is not IoT, it's not Internet of Things, okay? Some of these is smart appliances or robot, and as you might know, this is not new, right? This is not new, it's nothing, maybe some of, uh, I didn't have a chance, but I believe maybe some of you here have a chance to play with some of this. Uh, nothing, uh, I didn't have opportunity. Uh, this conference I would like to be, was the conference where the Apple II in California was presented the first time. So it's nothing new, right, this is stuff. Robotic is nothing new. So people nowadays say, oh, we can do this. Sorry, buddy, this is kind of stuff in the 80s. A lot of people have done before. So what, uh, so what is the new thing? Is this. Now we can mix some millions of web services, PayPal, Braintree, Twitter, Google, Netflix, and the millions of web services that we have nowadays with millions, billions of sensors, single, on ship computers and displays, appliances, whatever. A lot of stuff that you can create using robot stuff, you know, electronic stuff. This mix that we didn't have before. Imagine in the 80s, we cannot play, you know, many, you are Atari, you remember? I guess everybody, I guess everybody here have already have played with Atari, right? So nowadays, oh, no, you just ask for your neighbor to come to your home. Hey, let's see if you're here playing. 
you know, they didn't have at that time like uh, P uh, PlayStation Network or Xbox One, you know. So that, this is for me, in my humble opinion, Internet of Things. This is the thing need to be connected, right? So, and to work with this for, I believe for uh, who has more uh, experience and in system development is not hard, but for new people, uh, they, sometimes they realize they need to be a polymath, you know? Uh, have you ever heard this word before? I guess not. So, polymath is someone that has several different skills, okay? And the for work of IoT, Nowadays it requires, because most of, for instance, some guys out there, they just work, okay, I'm just Java EE developer. I'm just, okay, I'm just only for his JavaScript developer. They don't just, just know one thing. But in general, to work with IoT, you will have several skills, like Leonardo da Vinci had in the past, you know? Because you cannot define that, okay, Renato da Vinci was a painter. No. He was a botanic. No. He, was, he had several skills. So what I like to ask for the people that attend my, uh, my presentation is, when you get a start in working with IoT, take opportunity to learn new things. You know? So learn about, learn about electronics. Start to learn about you know, maybe mobile development. You know, so you need to start to see a several, several uh, new skills that will be useful to you build a star solution because the, your customer don't, don't want to know, uh, doesn't want to know that you are ah, okay. I just mobile, I made it just amazing uh, mobile, mobile application, but my electronic part is terrible. No, he wants an entire complete solution. So maybe if you do, for instance, like, uh, I'm sorry, sir, what's your name? Dale. Dale. As Dale said, oh, I could create a, 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 maybe a mobile app, then interact with the machine, you know, I can make your purchases, everything. So for do this, you need to have a server-side knowledge to contact with, uh, you know, for, if, for instance, in this case, with PayPal services. You need to have knowledge about client server because you need to, need to write a Java client application to run in Raspberry Pi, you need to know about electronics, you know, at least for you able to know, to connect the GPIO into a relay model and other simple stuff, but you need to know basics of electronics. You, it will be great if you know some mobile development, you know, to, ta to build maybe uh, some uh, application in your mobile phone to interact with a machine. And of course, always very valuable, you have some operational system knowledge, right? And they say, oh my God, I'm a prepared. Of course, the people that are here, I believe they, you are, you know, because I'm, you're a very experienced developer, so I believe this will be easy for you. Just need the time to code. That's the, the challenge, have the time, you know, to code. But it's not so hard. And a little bit of a history of, of, of uh, Raspberry Pi. As you ever know, this build uh, is a project uh, that some guys in England, some professors over there has created. Right? Uh, in the day, one thing that I, I prefer, I, I think they did was awesome is, do, does you guys rem do you guys remember the project One Laptop Per Child? Do you remember that project? Okay. Travel across the world, every sessions, everything, and nothing. Nothing happened, unfortunately. Uh, but those guys in England, okay, let's do some cheap machine for poor students be able to start to learn about development and learn about electronics. And this little, machi this little machine already have sold five million of, probably maybe eight items. Five million, I mean, in less than two years. It's amazing, you know? So this is always remember me, keep it simple. You know, simple thing works. And, uh, Okay, and uh, this is, uh, by the way, this picture is the first protoboard, you know, the first uh, prototype of a Raspberry Pi. 
you know, to take a breadboard and put some wires. Let's see the chips together. It's a, it's just, it, I, I got amazed, you know, how a simple thing could, you know, uh, could start, a, could be very, very, very successful. Uh, do you guys know already this or not? Do you, do you guys already know? Okay, so let's go further. Okay. Uh, the, for me, the best operating system to run into the Raspberry Pi is the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Uh, anyone he doesn't use Raspberry Pi? Okay, everybody uses Raspberry Pi, right? Okay, so you already know this. So let's talk about Java. Uh, do you guys already have installed Java SE into Raspberry Pi? You, anyone else? Use Node, okay. So you're new for Java. Anyone else? Two people here, so okay. Uh, let, let me talk a little bit. Uh, before the Java 7, I think, just have a, a fork version of uh, OpenJDK for the Rust for ARMs and for Raspberry Pi. I believe Oracle realized that IoT is a large market, and and in Java Seven, they build I know a specific version of a Java SE for ARM processors. Okay, so. If you do for a one arm, you know you can you can run and sell any any uh, any processors that feel, that are how can I say uh, that are, that follows their arm specifications. Okay, so uh, with that, but they improved their support in Java and in just the, you know in eight version in the version eight, right? Uh, and now. I, I, in this, for instance, in this Raspberry Pi, I can run, for instance, uh, Glassfish. I've tried to run Glassfish. I've tried to run Wildfly, and it works. You know. So if you need it embedded a uh, small Java AE Java Enterprise server in a Raspberry Pi, you can. For any reason, oh, okay, I need a need a web server here running in my network or in my home. For any reason, you can run. Right, so this is I believe this is a grand advance. You know, uh, I know before in the past, uh, Java. Okay, oh, you need a server to run. You know, because it consumes a lot of uh, resources. Right, and nowadays I was talking to Stephen Sheen from Oracle that Java is getting back for his roots because when Jamie Gosling and his other guys started the project, the idea of Java to run in appliances. Right. That's the idea, initial idea of Java. But as the virtual machine opened up a new way to run your code, okay? Now, do, do you guys remember? Write once, run where? Remember this slogan, right? So, while, as virtual machine brings this new, you know, new vision for, uh, for technology, okay, let's start and go to server. But now, with the Internet of Things, it's getting back for these roots. It's interesting, 20 years later, <laughs> but it's happening. And um, they created for Java ME, the device IO API. Do you, guys, do you already know about device IO? Okay, he knows. Uh, anyone else? No, okay, so let's talk. So device IO API was built for initially for Java ME. Right, so one one perfect. So uh, you can run, for instance, you can find some documentations, but other documentation tutorials that you saw in the past was for Java ME. But when the the Oracle will start to release a version of a Java SE for ARM processors, oh, why not we use device I/O API into Java SE? Well, it works okay. So they open up, they um, integrate the device I/O open up to OpenJDK. Now it's run as an OpenJDK project, and perfect. It's work very cool. And nowadays uh, you can run 100% Java project 
to in your, for instance, in your Raspberry Pi. Because in the past, for you build the Java code, you need to use a Pi4j. Who has used the Pi4j before? He? Have you used a Pi4j before or not? You too? Okay. So, uh, what is Pi4j? Just to explain, Pi4j is a port of Wiring Pi libraries. Okay, it's, very, uh, it's I believe it's most popular uh, library for manage GPIO for Raspberry Pi. It's a library, Java library, uh, port of Java library of Wiring Pi. A Wiring Pi basically is built in C, and uh, and behind the scenes, the Pi4j calls uh, Python libraries, you know, and access the GPIO. Now, this is great. I've used a lot in the past. It was great API. It works perfect. But uh, the thing is, it run, it's made for run into Raspberry Pi. If you need, and for any reason, to move, uh, to run your code in another uh, single, uh, single board computer, you, it won't work. So that's the problem, the, I believe the problem of Pi4j, you know? So with now, if the Java, if you device your API, okay, you don't have this problem, okay? You code will run again over there. You just need to pay attention to one file that I'll show you later that uh, just you need to configure that, a file that configures the, the GPIO map. But the other, for, in, for the other things, runs perfectly. So this is one thing very important that I suffered a little bit a lot, that the map of uh, the the map of the GPIO that Pi4j uses and the device I/O use is different. Once I spend all day testing my application, testing the, the the jumpers, everything. Why? Why not using? Because I was using the same Pi4j mapping into device I/O. And my code wasn't running. Oh my God, what is happening? And the search in Google said, oh, they are different. So later of a presentation, I, I recommend you bookmark this <laughs> because it could save you a lot of time, you know? And uh, this is, it, these images are very useful because sometimes, several times I forgot because a lot of pain. So this is for device IO and this is for Pi4j, right? So, it's an important detail that will serve time. And what, what, what is the magic that makes the device that you work between several you know, bit, uh, single board computers? Is this file, the properties. Each single board computer has one that maps his, uh, his for instance, where we run the UART ports, where you know your uh, SPI ports, you know, and uh, of course GPIO. Okay, so for Raspberry Pi, we have this uh, DIO dot properties dash Raspberry Pi. You need to inform to, G, to, to uh, Java, uh, the JVM, which port, um, which port are you using, right? So uh, this, uh, it will follow this, uh, these configurations, these definitions, okay? And also, um, for security reasons that, honestly, I don't know why, exactly why I would use it, but it requests that you give some special permissions to access the GPIO, right? So you need to generate a policy file, okay? And grant uh, permissions to access the GPIO pins, right? Okay, in production, of course, may just select, just pick the GPIO pins you use, okay? But for development, re development, development purposes, you can do this, right? Open every, using every, excuse me? No, no, you need to, yeah, you need to execute as a, with super privileges, like, but you're using sudo. But uh, besides sudo requirements, you have, need to have this file. Additional, yeah. Because one is for uh, operation system, for Raspbian, another is for GVM, this is for GVM. So, any questions so far? 
Is everything okay until now? Okay, it's clear? Okay. Uh, before I move forward, I would like to, okay, I will I'll invite you for battle hack for someone that's in near, nearby here in the East Coast. Uh, of course, the people from Wisconsin, are, you're welcome there too, because we have a World Series hackathon and, uh, and the IoT hacks are very welcome, are very welcome. So I would like to invite you there that we will go in one in, in in a month, I believe, one month in a week, and then Raleigh, North Carolina. So you guys are very welcome to go. As I didn't know if you would be until here to lab, let's move forward this. And yes, it's lab time, okay? So let's go. So I, I've built something to talk about Raspbian a little bit. So can I, do you want to reveal this, how to create connections or could I move forward? Are you familiar with this? Okay, this is for set up your Wi-Fi network, but I believe you are not very interested about this, so let's move forward. Uh, if, I, if you had a table, I would bring more Raspberry Pi to do a hard, you know, hands-on sessions, but when they say that we have a table, so sorry. Okay, this is for the final static AP, DSP, so okay, this is not interesting for you, okay, blah. Uh, Warding Pi, this is instruction later, uh, it's very useful. What I, uh, what I, I, I left the Warding Pi uh, instructions here because it's very useful for you when your Java, the, your Java program fails, mm, let me double check. So you use Warding Pi to check if the problem is in the hardware or in your software. Okay, so I recommend if you are using Java, installs Wiring Pi, right? And because and also it's pretty easy, you know, you just get the uh, download the Git code, the the Wiring Pi code from Git, and build it. You know, it's very quite simple, and you can uh, turn it on and then turn it off. Uh, let me connect. Let me try to connect the the wire, our Raspberry Pi here. Let me show if go. Okay, um, I just needed to. Let me see if it could, if it does work. Okay, is better now, or it's too small? Yeah, it's good. Okay, uh, let me connect it to. What is the network? Is on. Okay, it's here. Okay, here we go. I have a small mobile router. Okay, I guess it's work. Let me see the... Eh. Okay, let me see which IP I have. Oh, it's too small. Now it's better, right? Let's see what is. Okay, 100. Okay, it's supposed to be 102. SSH pi 192.168.0.0. Okay, Raspberry. Come on. Here we go, okay. All right. Why my buddy went so long, slow? GPIO. I'm sorry, I won't think that's maybe because then. Uh... Oh, come on. Okay, so GPO will install. Let's turn, if everything is okay, let me see. Okay, let's start, let's turn it on the uh, mode output, mode for out. Put 
Okay, turn it. It's working. The light is turning on. Let me turn it off. The light. You see. So this helps us to you to debug. You know, it's harder, right? So it's kind of a way to you need to debug. So you. Let me show you how is connected uh, our our. Try to, oops, come on. Just a second. Now it's on. Okay, here we go. Let me expand the image. Yeah, so uh, here's our, I have a slide that show you this in details, but just you see, here in GPIO, you have it's connected to this small relay. I don't know if you were uh, familiar with relays, but I guess so. So uh, we have one relay connected to to, to this the light the, the boob. Okay. So what I do when I when I oops ah okay let me turn it off right the image will get better. Uh, just a sec. Okay, GPIO, right? So it's very, it's quite simple to use, G, G, you know, the wiring pi. So now I write one, two, port four. Come on, I should. Now actually. I don't know what happened if this relay that we need to invert, but I don't know what's going on that. Uh, come on. What? Something happens. Okay, it's a demo. Obviously, in demo, this thing happens, right? So, this is the thing. Uh, when, I when I activate or deactivate... Okay. Well, for some reason, you should have to turn off the light, you know, uh, because uh, when I turn it, uh, when I send the, I send energy for the pulse for the relay, it should, you know, uh, close the circuit and pass energy. When I didn't send the pulse, okay, it stopped to, it opens and don't left the, the energy flows. But something, I don't know why it's not, uh, it's not turning off. I would, I would check. I reboot it and check. But that's the idea here. And here, in this other... Oh, it's because to turn off the light, I needed to... No. No, no, no. no. Okay. So, and uh, here, I have the connections to, uh, to the... Uh, here the motor of the candy machine. It's uh, so I, and the, the good part of using some very simple ones like this, that with the power of the Raspberry Pi, five volts from Raspberry Pi, you can feed the motor, you know? So you don't need it additional. But for, for light bulb, you require more, okay, light. So I use the, the power came from the, uh, came from the, the, the plug. But for feeds, these motors and several other stuff, only the, because the Raspberry Pi gives you a five a volts, uh, five volts, and also 3.3 three three volts so ports. This five will just, uh, that motor or exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Only the five volts from Raspberry Pi feeds. Yeah, yeah. I, you see. Uh, maybe, let me reboot, but I show you. Guys, it's, it's, it's enough, it's very, it's very interesting. But one important thing, very one important thing, the voltage is not so important, it's the amperes. But how many, it's like 10 milliampere or 20 milliampere out of that thing. Exactly. And multiplied by five. Yeah, but as I'm using, for instance, a Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi dongle, Wi-Fi USB uh, adapter, it, it draws a lot of energy, so I recommend you to use some uh, from some adapters that uh, at least with two amperes. It's great, you know. You can do a lot of stuff, you know. Plug uh, keyboard, could could plug monitors, and works fine. 
You know, at minimum, one ampere. Less than it, it won't work. At least one ampere, right? Here I'm using this uh, very simple one that use uh, one ampere. At sorry, two amperes. I was, I was trying to understand how what the output pin uh -huh. number four from from the uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh -huh. How much uh, energy can it? Uh, what is load capacity? Uh, it, 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 I no, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have for the GPIO it goes is three dot three uh, or the four because the two. Let me show you here the on the map. I'm surprised it can drive the motor. The motor uh, I think it will burn. Oh, let me. Motor. Ah, yeah. So this is for old one, but for new, uh, you see here is five volts. So this two first is for five volts and. Uh, and if it's DGPIO is 3.3 volts. It's only for it sends a sign, you know, just a digital. I thought you were driving the green one. N yeah, I, I, yeah, for motors, I'm using this one. Because this one, in general, is for, if you're not mistaken now, I, from my head, is for uh, UART, you know, for communications. And so this GPIO is, is for, you know, send uh, digital posts. Yeah, more general. This one, so it's the 3.3. .3. So I get the energy for the motor from here. Okay. Yeah, and I use a, yeah, and I use a one for relay. So this one is for relay. This one for motor. So five watts roughly it should be definitely enough to drive that one. It's what I, I mistakenly I was I was thinking the energy was I/O itself was. Ah, uh, no, 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 it's not the I/O itself. Okay. Sorry. Uh, no, no problem. That's why I was. Why so are you trying to drive in the motor? Uh, straight from the GPIO? Yeah. No, no, no. no. no, no. It's, the directly from GPIO, no, it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, it's because the relay. It says 16 milliamps. So I will, uh, I, I will ask you a minute just for to reboot. Okay, I will reboot. I don't know for some reason. I will reboot the reply. So a few seconds to get back. Uh, me, uh, meanwhile, I will show you for who has interest how to install. You know, so um, have one has someone installed uh, G or GDK before in Raspberry Pi? Okay, once, uh, let me show you. So, first you need to download it from in your computer, you know, because Oracle asks for you to uh, sign up for your terms and conditions and download it. Later, you using, for instance, if you're a Mac user or Linux user, using SCP, or if you're Windows user users, you can use WinSCP, copy the file, and later uh, you Create some, you create a directory for Java, copy there. This is very important, you know, if a lot of people and uh, they're starting, is starting on, on Raspberry Pi uh, fails. So this is very important, you know, to Java, your... I did include the open, open GDK version. And they don't include the Oracle version. You know, because it's not open source, it's something like that. But they, of course, if you run uh, no access GPIO device, you can, you can use the open GDK. You know, so this is so this is the important thing for because this because as the Java came with uh, open GDK version, if you don't do this when you run your com your Java, if you use of course the open GDK version, right? So do this and you check the Java version, and that's fine. Also, one other thing that I, after, after has suffered a lot, I learned is to uh, change for, for root user and the try and just for double check, you know, because once I think, oh, it's set, I run it, why, my God, why is it not working? And uh, I had to configure it to root, be, use the, the correct Java version. Define the variables, okay, you, this you already know. 
Okay, let's talk about the device I/O, how to install. So the thing is, first, you need to get the, the source code from the, op, the OpenGDK repository. So, but they don't use Git, they use Mercurial. So you need to install Mercurial first, later you clone his repository, right? Into, in your directory. And this is important thing. You need to build the device I/O jar in your Raspberry Pi. I recommend you do this, right? Because as it uses some specific uh, some specific items from the operation system of a Raspbian, you know some Linux libraries, native libraries, you need to build on it, right? So, but it's quite easy. Just follow this. They build, no problem. After, other, other thing to help you a lot too is copy the libraries, the, the native libraries and the device I.O. to your uh, Java runtime library folder, right? Because this is, you don't need to set everything in your class path. It's already there, so no big deal. This will make it easy for you need to make your Java calls, right? Okay, so now... Let's get started about talk about the good things. Okay, so Isaac, uh, I work for a money company. Let's talk about money. Okay, so how you can make money or could you create your vending machine? This is for okay, instead of sales lemonade, people nowadays could start to sell, you know, this and you know, people could pay using mobile phones. Yeah, okay, so the new generations can be. Now, now they have access to new technology, so they can create a new stuff, you know, to make money. And, uh, and how works our, our candy machine? How is, the, how is our sequence is? You will go as customer, you access a website. In this web store, you will be directed to PayPal. You pay for the candies, okay? When the restore uh, rece receives from PayPal, okay, it's paid. The web store sends a message to MQ uh, MQTT broker. Okay, are you familiar with MQTT? No. Okay, so let me explain. MQTT is a very is a IBM port of a very classic M IBM MQ series. Okay, for Internet of Things. The idea when they created uh, was build a broker very light. To, to IoT stuff be able to send, exchange information between themselves, right? So it's very useful to, very, quite easy to, to, to deal with. And then you have libraries for uh, MQTT for Java, Android, .NET, uh, PHP, uh, Perl, Python. So almost C, for almost any language that people use nowadays, uh, you can use MQTT. And I think they have a, a version, a JavaScript, sorry, a JavaScript version, so you can use a Node too, right? So it's amazing. So if from different, you know, devices, you can connect it to SemiQ and interact with the machine. For, any, uh, for, and for these sessions, I, you're going to use a web store, but in your other session, for instance, you can use an Android you know, you receive, the, you make the payment in your mobile and your Android device or uh, you can send the message to the queue in the machine, what the release? Machine, and the machine is listening. There is a listening Java as application here that is listening in this query, okay? And uh, uh, waiting for a message, a release message. So when the release, it, it activated the relays and activated the motors and the light. Right, and notify the queue. Oh, the candy was has been sent, has been released, and the customer has received the notify notifications. Right, quite simple, huh? It's not not big deal. Okay, this is the good part of it that I like too much because it's not so difficult to do. This is for if someone wants to in home try to you know do it by themselves. So is it the the this schema for you do, you building your relay and uh, your Raspberry Pi, okay? As, as, I believe I've, I've shown to you. Okay, 
Now let's try to use that test the, if everything is okay with the electronic part. So let's go to reconnect again. Okay, so GPIO mode for output. I think is the delay is gonna problem. Why? Oh my god, why so slow? Yeah, but the thing is, yeah, for, for sure it's the network, but I, I have this item here before, it should be fast. Okay, it took a long time, but it's <laughs> turning on. I'm, I'm, now I'm afraid if I turn it on it and uh, it will release a thousand, <laughs> a lot of changes, you know, it's one stop. Uh, okay, let's do this. Let's uh, start the application and see if Java application run faster. Uh, to do this, whoops. Okay, let's jump. Okay. So here is some stops that you can do later, you know, you go, uh, take your jar, die your jar, move to your machine. I, my, in my example, my code, I use Maven, right? So you need to add this library into your local Maven repository because I wouldn't be able to find in a Maven repository, this library, I need to talk with the guys in, maybe I would suggest for guys in Oracle, hey, put on the, put on a Maven repository. But for now, you need to add in your repository and open your NetBeans. Yes, I use NetBeans. And uh, you want to maybe you want to get in, uh, you wanted to see the code, right? So it's simple, it's on my GitHub. Okay, so GitHub. It's, it's easy, only two classes, you know, because that I say, oh, okay, let's, do this. I have two versions. One version is using Py4j, and this version is using uh, this version. I'm using Java, only Java. Okay. So I I create a uh, here's the the class, you know that I where I set up. Okay, let me. Uh, is it okay now to read? Okay, okay. So here the thing, I define some topics about, you know, uh, the topic on MQTT, a broker, the, the client ID, something, but uh, you, you can uh, later overwrite this. And this is important, your, the GPIO pins that you're going to use. Let's go to initialize, that is important. Here are the things. So. Here you configure your pin, right? So over there I say, okay, is, I said the pin number over here for the light. Here I'm telling to GPIO manager to, oh, it's only output, okay? I just, I push uh, for, I, I push the energy, push, pull. The other things, uh, and okay, I have configured my pin. And here, I open the pin, okay? I get, I'm able to now deal with the pin if this, I ask for the device manager, hey, please open the pin for me. And this, in this place, if you don't have the grant sanctions, I said before, you got exception, security exception over here. So because the, this, so because that, the policy file is important, right? So you open the pin, and that's okay. Here, I, the MQTT session, I started a uh, async client, right? So I, I created to the broker. I subscribe to the broker, it's here. And I connect, later I subscribe to the specific broker. And I publish a message to the broker, say, hey, I'm done. And uh, I can. I'm waiting for orders. This is an, you initial. You initialize your server, and here 
another class. Is the listener, MQTT listener. So when a message arrives here, I say, okay, I received the message and the I've, I've put a uh, debug, if you say, if I put, uh, is you alive, are you alive? The machine say yes. And this is the important thing. When I message, say, I send a message, release, what they do is they open the pin and set value. As I said before, I don't know for any weird reason, this model, I, if I, when I turn it on, uh, when I open it up, it's already closed. I don't know why for this case, uh, f I, I swear to you that I'm not connected into the part and relay that is already closed and, nor and normally closed. It's not, it's, no it's connected and normally open. But I don't know what is happening with this model, but I believe this is bug bad. So in general here, uh, I, so I know that pin server is already on, right? I know, but the pin, GPIO pin, other GPIO pin in general is not on by default, but I don't know what happened here. But anyways, here you just set the value, it's quite easy, you know, it's digital, on and off, so true or false, okay? So I turn it on, wait for 3.5 seconds, and I turn it off. And I use a little speaker, I use a small, uh, a, a small software for Linux called uh, eSpeaker, right? To say, to, to thank the customer, say, oh, thank you, right? So, only two classes. Quite simple, quite easy. It's very easy to, to deal with, right? So here's you close it and perfect. Now we need to cross the things, cross the fingers, just check. Let me take my here, okay, now what is that here? Uh, anyway, uh, any questions so far? Please. Uh, I was interested that the uh, MQTT client and listener, uh -huh. can you have to install anything on top of uh, the No, it's not necessary. Uh, let me show the palm file here. Import, uh, yeah, it's only, you only, oh, <coughs> just a second. Okay, here, uh, -da -da. source, no. and in POM file, you specific, you know, it's uh, just a, uh, well, uh, here, you see, it's a, uh, I use Pahu uh, library, it's the, I believe nowadays is the best uh, library, uh, it's the best MQTT implementation for Java that exists nowadays, right? So use, I use Pahu, I just put it here, and uh, Maven does all the job. So in the C, for important, and when you're going to use, this is important for your, uh, you need to add the device IO that you have compiled into your Maven, local Maven repository for, for this, this part for device IO. If in, Okay, and here I build a little app, the, the speaker, just to deal with the e-speaker uh, application. And speaker outputs Yeah, because the Pi has, uh, the Pi have, has a uh, audio exit, oh, right? Okay. So I have this small speaker just to say thank you. <laughs> you know, to be, try to be nice. Uh, it's easy if let's let's try it to see it's working No, it's a speaker And if I just say hi, I'll say okay Well, huh, interesting it was working. Okay But here in Java code I have here here Java Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the part. Mm. 
Okay, I guess. Okay, my mis oh my bad. For this, I, I forgot to see. But it's uh, I speakers is here. E speak. Oh, Jeff, come on. Yeah, sorry. E speak. Okay, I, I just needed to. Oh, let me. Raspy config because yesterday I was using uh, a TV, so I s asked it to Raspberry Pi, hey, please uh, send the audio to TV too. So, so the world. Advanced options. Audio. Okay. <coughs> Maybe if you don't mind, now I just need to reboot. Let me try it before, it's but I, uh, no, it's not. Uh, but anyways, I will reboot and. Uh, but anyway, let's try to. I guess you don't so interested to listen. The thank you, but it's it's e speak. It's quite easy. There is some. I have some details of it. I'm sorry. I, you're right. I have some small also configuration need to do it, and uh, I didn't have opportunity to do this for this uh, device. Um, what other? I have other machine, but I left some to some guys to use. Some students to use. Um, now let's start to our application. Let me get here because I have some interesting things to okay this is the permissions uh, I use so I uh, here I use GPIO 18 and 24 okay and uh, here is important thing so you can see the uh, the registry of okay GPIO map for Raspberry Pi okay and security the policy Okay, they are using, and here the jar, and uh, here is the parameters that I, I, I build the software for. First, the server, I'm a to server, I'm the Eclipse guys gently, uh, they have left a server for you use for tests, okay, so you can use this, iot.eclipse.org. This is my, my queue, okay. This is the my client, the name that you give, and this is the, the port. Because maybe if you use for, you know, um, I was in production, maybe I want to, to build a server, right? Uh, and also runs over, a, you know, a secure layer. So probably you want to use this port, you use four, four, three, or other security port you can configure it, right? So I left it this way to you be able to configure it to the port that you might need, want to use. Okay, so before I do that, let me see here. Uh, okay, copy. And here is Sublime. Okay, I already have it here because it's too large. But here, the my yeah, Kent's client. Perfect. Let's copy. And let's see. Okay, now it's got it fast. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's go. So if perfect. Okay, it's connected to the broker. Connected. That's right. Okay. Uh, just to see you. Uh, that you see you, for instance, who already have created your account, PayPal account, uh, for test? You? Okay, so you get some MMs for free. So please come here, take a, a, a cup, and I show you, uh, I have here uh, MQTT, okay? I will subscribe to that Kiwi. Okay, so M2M or connect. I have here MQTT for FX. I will subscribe. 
And here, as I said to you, I can send a message for it, you know? So the, here I will put the, the code, okay? And you see? Yeah, work, guys. Oh, please. Oh. So I so this I can do any I can push for instance any as I said any Android anything, but for I build a small a small site. So please, if you can, guys, please help me because I have a, a lot of MMs. I need your help, please, because if I get back with all these MMs, my boss will complain. Yeah, so I'm already no, no, no. Don't talk, don't talk about this. You know, you were you know, yeah. Even Justin started to play in squash, you know, to lose weight. So yeah, that's helping. Let's help him. So please, guys, I ask you come here. If you don't have your prep, come on, okay, okay. If you don't have it, small steps, you know, use a PayPal account. It's for free. Create an account there. And go to this web, this website, candies.novatrix.com.br. If your if your phone, your iPhone, or you know maybe Galaxy, what, what phone you have? Please. So you can go just uh, open. It's a web application for for smartphones. Justin, please buy one, yeah, man. Right or if you buy, the thing is, the problem is, if you buy in your computer the candies will be released and you throw away. So you need to, when you push, confirm your, co your purchase in PayPal, please come here. <laughs> okay. I will left the console open for we could check. Let me, me. Okay. If someone needs help to, to hold the, the cup, just I'm here. Okay, Jess, I see that you're, you're doing the web. Okay, oh. Jess, you're my friend. You helped me a lot. I left you. Anyone? Nobody wants? I will give you... Uh, no, 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 it's not that. Please. Okay, I will, I will make your life easier. Just a second. I do this. I have an account for you. So, I will show you. Here in my developer.paypal.com. No. Let me log it in. Come on. Okay. Dashboard. Accounts. Just to go from, uh, okay. You can use this one, John Doe dot at tasty with E and N dot com. Uh, I will write down in my, Justin, you forgot the cup. <laughs> I told you, don't use web. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, let's. Oh, come on. It's not okay here. So, oops. No, my expense. No. Cancel. Let me file. Okay. Now you can use this this credential. And your you use a candidate PayPal, they ask you for you uh, a user. So you can use John Doe uh, test dot, testy dot com, the capital T testy ten twelve. Huh? Is this one candies dot dot com dot br. This one. And it can get closer, guys. So it works because Justin tried it. <laughs> can we try one more time? Yeah, you can. 
but I would like to see the guys try. Uh, um, nobody wants. Oh my God! I, yeah, I'm far away from home, guys. I wanted to be able to take this MM back. Yeah. Oh no. This way, I won't be able to eat bacon's that morning. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, because I eat a lot of candies at, <laughs> at night. Okay, if someone wants, just come here and grab. This this site I I I I I built using PHP for uh, I I I use PHP to show how, for instance, you can use different language, you know. So as I said, you can, for instance, you mix Java, PHP, uh, use Android, or if I could, I could create a, you know, iOS application too. So several different applications. Okay, I have a volunteer. Okay, let's see. Is it returning? Okay. Maybe it's the internet connection. Oh, here we go. Okay. And I, what is it? Uh, please give him one this. Uh, what's your name? Sorry? Ryan. Ryan? Okay. Whoa, one more. Uh, someone forgets. Okay, it's yours? No? No? Okay. Uh, so this is for you for be our first customer here and have Nexus. Thank you very much now for helping. And also give me the, uh, you by, uh, sorry, miss, what's your name? Carrie. It's hard for you for, you know, for, uh, helping us to be other customers. So it's a kit. Uh, cause so, uh, so here you can able to see the, the message that I, I put out here, but here in, uh, MQTT, you see the message over here? So release, can deliver it. So you are able to, you know, uh, remotely you, you check in uh, how the, uh, the machine status. Let me say one message here. Let me ask for a machine. Are you alive? Alive? Let me see. Hey, yes, yes sir. I'm alive. So this way you can check with a machine. So you could build a lot of so build a lot of these machines and put in putting maybe and in schools or wherever some places you know, and of course, in even more pain you using mobile phones. The kids will love it, <laughs> you know. So it's a, it's an alternative. But of course, this is uh, of course this is for tests for demo purposes. But why not use this solution in other several? thousands, I don't know, maybe millions of vending machines you have out there. It's pretty much, why I do not need, for instance, take, oh, take, take my wallet, everything, and or push, in the, in the best case, you have uh, some uh, vending machines that have card slots, right? But some of them, they yet don't have. I know that uh, one of that, only the card slots cost is around $500. So if I have uh, a vending machine owner, I want to accept credit card, I need to pay for a company for $500 for them, bring me the device and install it into my vending machine. Come on, this is, I believe I wasted this less than $100. Yeah, it's very cheap, you know. Uh, I, if I want to use that vending machine, I could build my own vending machine because with uh, several relays, I could, you know, it's a motor that, you know, that release that cans, you know, all this stuff. So this is one thing I we believe that one thing that I believe personal and uh, is an e-commerce even more, you, even more you, you, you not, you won't need a cashier. You know, you can, for instance, in a, in a corporate, in some companies, you can have a store over there, several items. And the people can buy from themselves, you know. Go, go with your mobile phone, pay, and pick what, what you want. You don't need a cashier anymore. Or if it's something that you need to release some amount, you can just use this very simple machines. So, okay, this is for, I don't know, okay, 
for uh, educational reasons, but I, can, I believe nowadays it's a kind of business that any startup could start to do something very similar and very cheap, you know. So, uh, here's my... Uh, okay, I guess that we can show this. Yes, it worked. Perfect. <laughs> I would like to invite you again, guys, to go to Battle Hacking Rally here in North Carolina. Uh, we are, it's, it's not far from here, okay? Uh, who won in Rally? Uh, you go to World Finals in California. Is, you, come, uh, you have a competition with guys from all world. And he won the, the World Finals, get, take to home, $100,000, okay? So if you want to begin a startup and don't want to ask money for Angelverse or anything, it's your chance, okay? So, but if you, want, if you just want to, you know, to code, have a fun time, okay, it's your opportunity too because it's, it's for developers. So you guys are very welcome there. And thank you very much. I hope this, is, this information will be useful for you.